Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this puts a DIY, and today we're going to talk about some MIDI stuff, specifically MIDI and Raspberry Pi. So, of course, MIDI over USB has become a little bit more the norm these days, and it's basically plug and play. It's a miracle of music technology. And the Pi has USB, so naturally you're probably thinking, well, I can just plug in a USB MIDI controller and call it a day. You can even take a custom Arduino-based controller using the MIDI over USB library and also call it a day. What if you really wanted to use a genuine MIDI port and use it with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins? Well, I have good news for you. You totally can. Uh, the only issue is most of the resources on the internet are for the Pi 2 and early iterations of the Pi 3. Uh, and coincidentally, anecdotally, around that time, 2012, 2013, that's when I would say I noticed MIDI over USB becoming more common, more affordable, and more the norm for your general MIDI enthusiast. So today, we're gonna kick it old school, we're gonna take a MIDI port, and we're gonna connect it to the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4's GPIO pins, and we're gonna rock MIDI in over UART on the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. Yes. And it works in either Debian Stretch or Debian Buster if you are afraid to upgrade or you've already upgraded and feel that you have a point of no return happening. But first, we're gonna need a circuit, a MIDI circuit. There are two types of MIDI circuits out there, MIDI in and MIDI out. Today we're gonna be talking about MIDI in. MIDI in means that we are sending MIDI data to the Raspberry Pi. If we were doing MIDI out, we'd be taking MIDI data from the Pi and pulling it out to send somewhere else. Now, a MIDI in circuit requires an IC, specifically a 6N138, which is an opto isolator. You're also gonna need three different values of resistors, a 220 ohm, a 470 ohm, and a 10K ohm. You're gonna see a few different circuit diagrams floating around on the internet with varying resistor values. This is the combination that worked for me and the Pi. Feel free to experiment as you see fit. You're also gonna need a Zener diode, beware that polarity, a 1N4148 specifically. And then to connect to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna need connections to 3.3 volts, ground, and RX, or pin physical pin 10 on the Pi, and that's the serial receiving pin. It's important that you use 3.3 volts and not five volts, although the circuit itself can operate with either voltage because the Pi is using 3.3 volt data. So if you feed this circuit anything higher, you could damage the serial pin and that would not be a good day. Now, this brings us to the fun stuff. To communicate with MIDI on the Pi 3 and Pi 4, we are using serial communication, thus the use of the RX pin on the GPIO. However, there's a bit of a catch with the Pi 3, and from what I can see, the Pi 4 as well. The main UART, PL011, is being used for the Bluetooth module on both boards. Now this is great news for Bluetooth. It gets a stable and consistent connection. It's gonna work great, wonderful. However, that means it takes it out of commission for everything else. And the serial communication pins on the GPIO are actually using mini UART, which does not have the bandwidth to sustain our MIDI communication that we need. Now, the other hurdle with MIDI is that MIDI requires a very specific baud rate. If you ever were in the early days of MIDI and Arduino, you know all about adjusting that and trying to get that dialed in just right and working. So this means that to accomplish MIDI in with the Pi, we're going to have to boot Bluetooth off of that main UART we're gonna to have to then move that UART to the serial GPIO pins, and we're gonna to have to make it so that we can adjust the baud rate of the main UART on the serial pins as well. So let's switch over to Raspbian so I can show you how you do this. Okay, now that we're in Raspbian, we're going to do all this UART stuff by editing two text files that hold important boot information. A note, it's totally possible to mess up these files so that your Pi's OS won't boot properly. Luckily, since they're just text files, if this happens, you can take your SD card, pop it into another Linux OS, dig into your SD card's file directory, and edit the text files to remove your mistakes without having to do a clean reinstall. I've done this before. Uh, but basically, just approach these steps with caution. First up is the command line file. Open up a terminal and enter sudo nano slash boot slash cmd line dot text. 
All we're doing here is actually deleting a line of text, specifically console equals serial zero, comma, 115, 200. This sets the baud rate for the serial connection on the GPIO pins, aka our target, for this project, which is referred to on the Pi as serial zero. And since we want to be able to edit this baud rate eventually, we need to remove this line. Once the line is deleted, you can save and exit the text file. Next up is the boot config file, which if you've spent any time with a Pi, you've probably visited from time to time. You access it with sudo nano slash boot slash config dot text. Navigate to the very bottom of the file, and then we'll add some text lines. First, we're going to add in enable underscore uart equals one. Then dt overlay equals pi3 dash mini uart dash bt. This moves the Bluetooth module to mini uart, and yes, even on the Pi 4, you use Pi 3, at least at the time of recording. I tested before. And finally, dt overlay equals MIDI dash uart zero. These are basically device tree overlays for uart that are enabled on boot. Now you can save and exit. And then one last thing you might want to check if you've used uh, your version of Raspbian for a while. If you go into Raspbian config using sudo raspy dash config in the terminal, uh, there is that option to use uart to be able to log into the Linux console. Make sure that is disabled uh, because serial zero is actually holding that behavior. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that that is disabled. Otherwise, none of this will work. And now none of these changes that we did will take effect until you reboot. So let's sudo reboot right now. Once back to our happy Raspbian desktop, we can check to make sure our changes went into effect via the terminal. First, you can check the UART speed with VC gen cmd measure underscore clock uart it should read 48 megahertz around there the pi 4 doesn't read exactly that but it's not too far off that it affects performance however i will say that it looked like the pi 4 this was the default no matter what whereas the pi 3 it did change depending on what i was up to now we can also make sure that mini uart is no longer on the serial pins uh, by using ls dash lh slash dev slash star. This lists all devices, and if you scroll up, you should see that serial zero is now on AMA zero, which is the TL011 that we've been looking for, the main UART, uh, and TTYSO is the mini UART. You can see that it is on serial one. By default, serial one is AMA zero, which is allowing the Bluetooth to communicate to it. And yeah, so we've redirected all the UARTs to where they need to go. Now, the only thing left is to see if MIDI data is going into the Pi and that the Pi is recognizing them. Uh, we're going to test this with a simple test program in Python using the Pi MIDI library. Uh, basically, it's going to read the MIDI command we're sending and print it to the terminal. I'm using the MIDI baby pedal, uh, which I did a teardown of a couple weeks ago. Uh, which is going to send some note on messages. Uh, you set up the MIDI input by calling serial zero and then setting the baud rate to 38400 in the PyMIDI program. And running the Python script, you can see that the MIDI baby signal is being received and we are sending MIDI in over UART with a Raspberry Pi on the GPIO pins. And that, folks, is MIDI in over UART on a Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 on either Raspbian Stretch or Raspbian Buster. Yes. This is for very specific projects. As I said, MIDI over USB, way more common now. Could probably just do that for your most of your needs. But if you're doing something custom or you have a certain kind of circuit you want to do, or if you're looking to code some Python stuff, uh, for MIDI and the Pi, you know, it might be a little simpler to just hook this up and then you have more control over your circuit. So I just wanted to share because it took a lot of experimenting and research for me to finally get it working on our modern Pi setup. So I hope this is helpful for you. If you like this video, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. I will try to have a write-up somewhere or at least a too long didn't read on GitHub to show you what commands you need to enter in and change, and also have the example code for the, with the PyMIDI library to test your MIDI connection. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this. More MIDI stuff with the pie is coming. The whole reason why I'm researching this is for a big MIDI pie project that I've got coming up that I'm really excited about. But until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.